So this episode, we're talking about party guiles. Party guy. <laughs> That's me. No, we're party guys. No, party guile. What's that? So a uh, party guile is uh, making a number of beers out of the same mash. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to cover real quick is just a little history on it. A way to calculate your very own party guiles and uh, some links to example recipe. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so the, the inspiration for this episode was, uh, so I'd played around with Party Guile a couple of times in the past. I've, I've made an old ale and an ESB with one. Um, something from a barley wine, I don't recall. And uh, recently we talked about the, the Scottish Wee Heavy with plums that we're trying while we're talking. And uh, what I did, so that beer I brewed with our friend Denny. And uh, I made, we made 10 gallons total, 5 for me, 5 for him. And when everything was said and done, I ran five gallons of water through my mash tun, into his mash tun, out of his mash tun, into a kettle. Ta-da! So we have a, what I'm calling a Scottish table beer. It's technically in the range of a, a Scottish light. So I don't have good notes on what the ABV is on it, but I think it's about 25 to 3%. So it's pretty low. It's, yeah. It smells yeah. really good. But so party guy in itself, uh, it's kind of an ancient thing that they did. They've done it for a long time before, you know, we have much written records of it. Um, but the English are huge on party guy And I think it was uh, uh, in the 18th century, they did it so regularly that brewing a single guile w was considered really unusual. Uh, sometime in the 19th century, when they came out with hydrometers or when hydrometers started being used regularly, it gave the brewers a lot more control of the mixes of their beers. Um, so if you're, uh, personally I batch sparge when I do do sparging. Um, so it's pretty easy with a batch sparge because usually w what you do is you mash, you drain your mash ton, you add in a batch of sparge water, you drain that and then you add another batch in if you're you know trying to squeeze every last sugar out of it like I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you drain that out. And there you have, you have three sets of of words basically. Um, so the 20th century, the Scots adopted this, and I don't mean Scots, I mean the Scottish, um, but they adopted party guile and they started doing uh, a single recipe to make all their beers with, you know, three different beers out of a batch. And and that's where we have the three levels of Scottish beers, the, the Scottish light, the Scottish heavy, and the Scottish export. Um, and so like I said, I thought it was good tradition to make it out of the wee heavy. So, what do you think? Oh, this, this is really good. So, normally, whenever somebody says, oh, yeah, but like a lower ABV beer, I'm like, yeah, okay. But this has great flavor. Um, the aroma is aroma's great. So, you're getting a lot of that malt that, that you would expect from a Scottish beer. So, um, yeah, it's not quite chocolatey, but not quite like toffee or caramel either, kind of in between. Yeah. And it's just really really easy drinking and if it's like three percent man you could probably slam these yeah, a lot of them yeah yeah so uh yeah I, to me i got the chocolatey flavor but it kind of gets over run a little bit and mixed in there with the peat smoke i, mm. I just get the barest hint of peat smoke yeah and it kind of muddles the chocolate up a little bit yeah um, i could see that i, I if you just hand it well like you just did say oh here you go and i'd forgotten totally that you're we have you had uh peat smoke in it I didn't notice it. So. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah, I was really happy with the way it came out, and obviously it was the end of the brew day, and uh, we just you know kind of wung it, winged it, and wung it. I wung the water out. <laughs> <laughs> we just played it by ear and tried it out. I ended up with a decent gravity, so I threw some hops I had in it and uh, boiled it up right there next to the other batch of beer, and voila. Yeah. So so questions. So, and if you have questions, leave them below. But, um, I have questions. So you said you did the Wee Heavy, so you did your, um, mash water, one container, first sparge, second container, second sparge, third container, right? Mm -hmm. So now did you, did you, uh, mix them to get to a certain, eight, um, gravity for the, for the party dial? So this part, so that's how you do it for a real party dial. This one, like I said, is playing it by ear. Yeah. So I didn't. We just put everything into, we did... A sparge and one rinse. I'm sorry, mash and one sparge. Okay. That we had all the volume we needed, even more. 
and we went from there just you know boiled that up for the wee heavy yeah so without that second sparge that i figured there's still a good amount of sugar in there so, okay so yeah. basically you did the second sparge and then that was your party guy and that's this correct that, okay yeah okay. yeah okay. correct right. although i sparged it through two mash tons yeah yeah yeah, yeah. since you guys were both making yeah five gallons of it okay no that makes so. sense because that's what i would typically do when so when you uh showed me your your notes there and it's like, oh, here's the math. I was like, math? I didn't know there's math. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I won't do math. That's like work. Yeah. So, well, so first off, I want to say that uh, Zimmergy <clears throat> has an excellent article in the November December art uh, issue about Party Guile, and it's written by Ron Pattinson. Um, one of our viewers actually mentioned uh, in the comments on our English Porter recipe about Ron's blog, uh, Shut Up About Prickly, Prickly Barkins. I better look it up. I hate to mess it up. Shut up about Barkley Perkins, and uh, yeah, it's close. And uh, so uh, it, it it was just really funny coincidence that I ran across this article and I started digging into um, Ron Pattinson's other work. I'm sure everybody else has heard of him. And he's got several books, but uh, I highly suggest reading that article. He's got a great example recipe of uh, a couple party guiles done in the earliest, uh, sorry, early 20th century. Um, so I'm going to give you an example recipe. So my Wee Heavy was about 20 pounds of grain, right? So uh, basically what you're doing is you take, your, you take your mash and you drain the mash and you store it in a separate container from it, your first sparge and your second sparge step, okay? And you can start prepping for this, you know, now. Just start taking gravity readings and volume readings of, of the beers that you make if you do batch sparge. And they'll give you an idea of the percentages and what you can expect. But um, so you take those, those that mash wort, then you take the first and second worts, and you write down the volumes, and you take the gravity readings. And for this example, let's say I have so I'm mashing 20 pounds of grain with 6.25 gallons of strike water. So my first runnings are going to be about 3.9 gallons at 1094, so 1.094. Okay. So what you want to do is take the one off. And just consider the 94 your points per gallon okay so any of the work we do we're going to multiply that running per gallon by that number of points okay so my second runnings since I've already dealt with grain absorption uh, I'm going to have five gallons of sparge water going in I'll get five gallons of spark sparge water out and it'll have a gravity of 1039 so again 339 points per gallon then my second sparge step, I'll run another five gallons in there, and I'll when I drain it, I'll collect five gallons, and this work should be about uh, one, 16 points per gallon, so 1.016. Um, I'll have some links into the show notes to some calculators and spreadsheets that you can use to help you figure this out if you'd like. Um, there's actually a really good one that has uh, topping it off with grain in between steps and you know changing the amount of water you use so and it'll give you an estimate of what the gravity is okay so we got these three words now right? right so what we can do the way we do it is we take a volume of each of them right and you know do this on paper before you start mixing them and if you add up the points per gallon for each gallon you use and then divide it by the total number of gallons mm -hmm. then you get the gravity Right. Okay. So if, uh, so if for for my first beer, if I used two point nine gallons of the first runnings, I'd have two hundred and seventy two point six points. Okay. Right? Because you're multiplying it by, by ninety four. Correct. Okay. By ninety four. Yeah. And then if I took uh, two gallon, I'm sorry, one gallon of the the first sparge, mm -hmm. then I have thirty nine points, mm -hmm. and I don't use any of the third sparge or the second sparge. Okay. Okay. So that would be 311.6 points divided by 3.9 gallons, and it gives me a wort of 1.079. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's right in there uh, in okay. wee heavy territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And remember, too, these are original gravities, not post-boil. So um, in Ron's article, he talks about, uh, I guess traditionally they would <clears throat> boil and hop the each wort independently before mixing it. Mm, so yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. So mm. so now I've made one beer. I made a wee heavy, right? So our second beer, if I take uh, one gallon of the first runnings, that's ninety four points, 
take three gallons of the second runnings, that's 117 points. And then the third runnings, I take one gallon, that's 16 points. So after dividing that total by five gallons, I get a 1045 wart. Huh. Yeah, so and five gallons of it. So, um, you know, that's right in there, Scottish export. Oh, huh. that's, that's actually not bad. When it, I think when you had explained the math to me previously, you know, I was like, yeah, I, yeah. You're, you're speaking Greek to me. I had no idea what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, once you kind of see an example, it's yeah. easier to wrap your head around. Yeah, yeah. but using that example, a wee heavy with, you yeah. know, breaking up. That, that makes sense. Yeah, But so we're not done. Today. We still got a whole bunch of word around. What? Right? So for our third beer, uh, because I know everyone's got three brew kettles at home, right? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> so Losers, that's yeah. who doesn't. <laughs> so for the third beer, I'm going to use none of the first runnings because I've used them all up by now. I'm going to use one gallon of the second runnings because that's all I've got left. Okay. And then I'm going to use three gallons of the third runnings. So uh, once I total up those points and divide that by four, I get a 1021 wart. So, I mean, that's that's right there in Scottish light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, you get four gallons of it. So, I mean, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I mentioned Ron's article, and he actually had a, a different way of formulating it, and, and I haven't quite wrapped my head around it just yet. I've only read it through a couple of times. I'm a little slow sometimes when it comes to that, so um, I'll have to give you another read. But by all means, go check it out. So Yeah, well, this is, that's really interesting. But So now, just to backtrack and to kind of reiterate, you didn't do that with this one. You took the, the first yeah. runnings, yeah. made that the wee heavy, mm -hmm. and then whatever's left over, we have this, which is... Yeah. Which is awesome. Well, and then one other thing you, they can do is, I mean, if you think about it, okay, so you have these words, and you just mixed them up. So, uh, like I said, you can cap, they call it capping the, the mash, but after you do your first runnings, you could put some more grain in there, mash yeah. it, and then drain it, and then the next time, put another one sure. in there and drain that. Yeah. And uh, then, depending on how you hop it, you can have a completely different beer. Yeah. And... Um, uh, wow. who, who is it? Fuller's actually still does. Um, they still they do party guile as well. Now I guess most of the British breweries that have been around for a long time still do yeah. party guiles, but they do. Uh, they make three beers out of one mash. They make yep. their ESB London Pride and Chiswick Bitter. Yeah, and there's a, there'll be a link to that article. They have a nice interview with the brewer, yeah. and that's actually where I got the math. I use his math. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. No, I think I listened to that. That uh, interview and yeah. yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah. So, and then I didn't realize it until today, but um, they also would take um, inverted sugars and prime in the cask uh, some of the beers, so that would mm -hmm. you could make a beer darker, you know, oh, with the inverted sugar yeah. or not make it dark, and yeah. you know, like a different. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. Oh yeah, I mean, just when you were talking about, um, what'd you say, capping, capping, yeah, mash? capping it with grain, um, yeah. just put. Like dark grains in there, and then you take, like you said, you have a yeah, right. you have dark beer, yeah. yeah, entirely different beer, maybe an uh, amber beer, and then you you put some dark inverted sugar in it. Now you got something that's black, yeah, kind of yeah. more porterish, maybe, and and then throw on top of that, you can age one beer for a period of time, sure. and then blend it later. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. Hmm. So now you've been talking about British and Scottish. Are there any other good examples that people might know, or that I might know? Um, a, from elsewhere that they, they do party gala. Like, there are any German or Belgian examples? So, um, the Germans do, I don't know specifically of a example beer that they do, but they call it Nauch beer. N A U C H. Nauch beer? Yeah. Nauch beer. That way. I can't find it though. Yeah. I, I had it down here somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, um, I better find it. I'm not even talking about commercial examples, but you're like, oh, you know, they used to take a triple and then they made a single. Yeah. With a, you know, I don't know if that's true. But and and that's my. I thought that was my understanding with the single and the double or the single and the quad. Yeah. Is because I could easily see where you could do a Belgian dark strong and then do a double and a single. Yeah. And a single might be because I always picture a, a BDS and a. a, a a double is being a little bit darker yeah. than a single, so I'm like, eh, maybe not, but I, that's why I was thinking triple and single, because they're both lighter. Yeah, lighter yeah. Color, so well, I mean, they use inverted sugar in it, though. You know, they use the Belgian candy syrup. 
Um, and well, it gets some color from that. Yeah, as well, sure. As well as caramelization. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I'm not saying it couldn't be done. You could be wrong, but I mean, you know. I, I'm sorry, you could be right. <laughs> no, no, you had it right the you first You might time. be crazy. You, you, you are entirely wrong, Jesse. You're, no, okay. you're smoking crack. No, I mean, you could be right. I don't know specifically yeah. that they did, but... And I saw a list somewhere else of some beers where they did do that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the whole... The whole uh, practice of it resulted from you know way back in the day they could make these monstrous mash tons out of wood but they could only make kettles kettles that were so big you know with their metallurgy skills yeah. so they'd mash and you know have multiple kettles in the same brewery yeah you know? and i always thought that uh, i don't know grains were probably not as easy to come by as they are today you know it's mm -hmm. not like you know the peasant's going to go down to the homebrew store and get you know all the grains that he wants he's going to have this amount of grain and like well i'm going to maximize my use of this resource that i you know had to you know put my blood sweat and tears into so i'm going to make as much beer out of this crap as i possibly yeah, can yeah. so you know just yeah. looking at it from an economic point of view I, I can absolutely see where they do that yeah well so if you <clears throat> know of any other beer combinations that that were commonly party guiled besides the scottish or i mean heck send us some more scottish beers and english beers so. yeah um yeah let us know for sure i wouldn't mind doing a follow-up i'd really like to have someone in our club start a party guile mastermind group that's champion that i could idea. take part in I, yeah. <laughs> yeah no kidding well i was even thinking it was like oh that might be a a good experiment for us later yeah, on like we yeah. do a party guile but and we could do like a two-stepper you know make yeah. two beers yeah yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I absolutely think that uh, somebody in the club should do it. Yeah, not one of us, but someone else. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that we're lazy. I no, mean, we just know that. Yeah, we're busy making fine videos. Yeah, fine, fine videos, production <laughs> quality. But oh, anyway, so no, that's a great idea. I should bring that up in the next club meeting. So, anything else? Um, I don't think so. Um, yeah, no, yeah. If you have any suggestions, this is a great topic. So. Let us know your experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Any feedback's welcome. Uh, and if you learned something new uh, or something valuable to you in the show, why don't you buy us a coffee? We got a little link in the, uh, I'm sorry, a coffee. We got a little link in the show notes. Uh, um, yeah, otherwise, thanks for, thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk, or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes. That's the case, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say party guy, I'm going to say party guy, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I should, you should let let me let it be fresh. I, I was going to, but I, I don't want you to go party down, blah blah, and me like, you know, ham fistedly going there. So anyway, red. No, it's not even getting. No, no red whatsoever. Oh yeah, no, but it's at least not yellow. No, high green. <laughs> yeah, high green. <laughs> okay, your laugh got into the yellow. Okay. Yodelay Wow, that's so strange. Ample recipe. It's gonna be awesome. Hey, you know, I could do a little breaker thing that goes like or something weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so.